I wonder how many miles the Bears have gotten on their credit cards from all the traveling they've done because they seem to have been at every single pro day this past week. And after trading Justin Fields, the Bears are on the move to find their next quarterback. But not only that, they are also looking for their next potential left tackle, their next edge rusher, wide receiver to pair with whoever their quarterback is, likely Caleb Williams. It was a huge week for the Chicago Bears, and I'm excited to break it down with you guys. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to this Friday's recap of the Chicago Bears' very busy week. My name is Nick Rohde, and as always, thank you for tuning in. Very grateful to be with you guys here today because we are going to run through all the different moves that the Bears have made this past week in regards to finding the next best prospect to use at number one, number nine, or maybe a trade back scenario. Before we begin today's show today, please make sure to hit the like button on this video. It is greatly appreciated. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And fun announcement for you guys. Please make sure to get your ticket to our first ever NFL draft party happening April 25th at 6 p.m. at Rizzo's Bar and Inn in Wrigleyville. There's a Cubs game beforehand, so would love to see you guys there. But we're going to have current players, former players, drink deals, food specials, you name it, we got it, and we will be live streaming from Rizzo's Bar and Inn. So if you can't make it, stay tuned here. We would love to see you guys. But excited to go through today a very busy week for the Chicago Bears, and it's just getting started guys the next couple of weeks are going to be crazy and we're super excited to bring you all the news again please hit that like button subscribe to stay up to date on all chicago bears news now this obviously the biggest story of the week was going to check out quarterback Caleb Williams at USC's Pro Day, which he had an unbelievable day, in my personal opinion. A really good showing by the potential number one overall pick. And his stats and what he did at the Pro Day was awesome. To start off, his very, very good day moving in the pocket. He actually came in at six foot, a little under six one. So he measured six one and seven eighths inches at the combine but he ended up coming in at six feet, seven eighths inches. So about roughly an inch shorter, but again, the combine and pro day are way different. It's more taken seriously at the combine. So I trust the combine stats a little bit more, but he's above six feet. If that makes everyone feel a lot better. Uh, Caleb Williams though, he had a great pro day. Uh, Ryan Poles was very impressed. There was Poles and flus going up to his dad, looking like they were talking for a bit. And, Everyone's playing their cards right. Poles is making that introduction. His dad's kind of like, oh, yeah, hey, how's it going? We, you know, we know there's a good chance of you going, bringing my son to the Chicago Bears, which I think would be awesome. I, I mean, like, I have officially accepted that Caleb Williams is very likely to be the next Chicago Bears quarterback. And if you guys are excited about that, I want to hear that in the comment section below. Everyone, please put a bear down in the live chat if you're just tuning in. We got 50 people right now. I expect to see 50 bear downs. But Caleb Williams pro day looked really good. Just natural throw inability. Really? This guy's arm is special. Just a flick of the wrist. I, you know, reminds me a ton of Aaron Rodgers, and he grew up idolizing Aaron Rodgers. He is a Packers fan, but I don't think that's good. He's a professional at the end of the day, guys. And I really think that overall Caleb Williams pro day spoke a lot of volume in regards to how he plays as a player. His arm ability his overall agility. He was throwing 70 yard bombs to Brendan Rice, who I'm going to get to in a minute here. But perfect spiral on a dime just looked really good and comfortable in front of all the different scouts. The commanders were there. The bears were there. Um, the giants were there. There was a lot of different, you know, scouts and coaches at the pro day. So overall was a good showing by Caleb Williams to show his ability and what he's going to bring to whatever team he goes to, but looked really good on the move. Looked really good. Deep passes looked comfortable. There's no defense or anything, but all you have to do is go back and look at his clips in college, guys. I mean, unbelievable player, former Heisman Trophy winner in 2022. 2022 was by far his best year. Uh, over 4,500 passing yards, a 66.6. Ooh, ooh. Oh, that's a weird number of uh, completion percentage, 10.3 yards per throw, 42 passing touchdowns in five interceptions with a 169 quarterback rating. Still had a great year last year, his junior year at USC with over 3,600 passing yards, 30 touchdowns, five interceptions and a 170 QBR. So overall, Caleb Williams is the real deal. He showed it at his pro day. We made a video about his highlights. So after this video, please go and check that out. But really, Caleb Williams had a great pro day. 
and the Bears were fully there. I mean, everyone that you wanted the Bears to have there was there. So Caleb Williams did a great job uh, down at University of Southern California. Uh, quickly going to go to the live chat real quick to see how everyone's doing. Well, there's those bear downs, guys. Foster, nice to see you. Santana, I couldn't agree more. Run up those likes, guys. Joe R, bear down. Um, thank you, Santana. Yes, I'm wearing my blue light glasses because my eyes are killing me today from all the stuff. I got a big video coming out tomorrow, so stay tuned for that. But we got a bear down. We got bear down, bear down, bear down, bear down from North Carolina. Shout out to where you guys are calling in from because we got Bears fans all over the nation. We're the greatest fan base in the entire NFL, in my personal opinion. Shout out to where you're calling in from, but we got bears down everywhere. If you see your name on the screen, absolutely throw it up there. Doc, how's your personal life? It's going great. Thanks for asking. Really appreciate that. Uh, I'm looking like Clark Kent. Um, uh, maybe, uh, I've, I've, I've gotten that one before, but yes, absolutely. Uh, thanks for that. Um, but thanks guys for, yes, bear down, bear down, bear down, editing lots of videos today, but yeah. So big day, big overall for Caleb Williams, definitely someone that I wanted to hit on for you guys today. And I think he had a really good week. So the bears definitely have him on his target. He had really good interviews with him, good dinners, Things are looking in the right direction that Caleb Williams is likely going to be a Chicago Bear with that number one overall pick. Let's go into the other guy that they were looking at the pro day at USC, which was wide receiver Brendan Rice, son of Jerry Rice. For all my all my fans out there that love Jerry Rice, his son plays a crap lot like him. Um, last four years in college, spent his first two years at Colorado, then transferred to USC, three bowl games during that time, had his biggest year at USC this past season with almost 800 receiving yards, a 17.6 yard per catch average, 12 receiving touchdowns. And this guy was just everything that you want in a wide receiver. A lot of people are saying, including myself, that he could come to the bears in that third round pick because of the fact that he knows Caleb Williams. And, you know, just imagine that wide receiver trio of DJ Moore, Keenan Allen, and Brennan Rice, Caleb Williams, or whoever our quarterback is, is going to have a field day with that wide receiver trio. Just crazy good, very impressive. But, you know, Brennan Rice looks really good out there. You know, he does stand at 6'3", 205 pounds, according to uh, sports reference. He's a big kid, another big wide receiver to be in the red zone. He looked really good at his pro day, Was didn't drop anything, caught a lot of deep routes from Caleb Williams. But also during the season past year, he was Caleb Williams' number one target. So the Bears got a good look at him. He's a projected third rounder at the moment. So the Bears could definitely go out and get Brendan Rice at that third round pick at number 75 overall, which I wouldn't mind. Let me know what you guys think about getting him in the third round. I think it would be great because you have that established relationship with Caleb Williams. You have that ability of being a big body wide receiver. You have Keenan Allen and DJ Moore ahead of you that are going to mentor you and teach you and your dad's freaking Jerry Rice. So there's got to be something good there in that gene poll, I think, going. So overall, would love Brendan Rice to become to the Chicago Bears. I think he had a really impressive pro day as well. You know, Caleb Williams didn't have any defenders on, nor did Rice, but Rice did everything correctly. Great footwork, great speed, great downfield vision, good hands. You name it, this kid did it as well. So I'm hoping that he stays a projected third-round pick and the Bears can snag him at 75 because he would be a hell of a player to bring into the Chicago Bears system. Um, but – Let's go into the next guy that I think a lot of people are starting to talk about as a possibility, but Notre Dame offensive tackle, Joel Alt, the number one projected offensive tackle in this upcoming NFL draft. I mean, this guy is an absolute beast. 6'8", 322 pounds. Again, 6'8", crazy good arm length. Uh, he has a 90.7 overall PFF grade, which is the best in the NFL draft at the moment for offensive tackles. Comes from a great line of Notre Dame offensive linemen. This kid would be super special to have on the team because he's built like a tight end, but plays like an offensive tackle. Very reliable. And during his entire NFL career, guess how many sacks he's given up? One. One sack. He's only given up four quarterback hits and a total of eight quarterback hurries. So great protection overall. In the last couple of seasons, he's had over 2,000 offensive snaps for the Fighting Irish, and he's been pretty darn legit. Really good player overall to bring in. I, if the Bears do get Joe Alt, I just want to put this out there. He's not falling to number nine, guys. There is no way a guy like Joe Alt, who has the same potential as Quentin Nelson, who also came from Notre Dame, there is no way he's falling to number nine. So this would mean that the Chicago Bears would trade back the number one, pick a few spots, get a lot more draft capital, we'll take a quarterback maybe at nine instead, but they would take Joe Alt probably at three or four because teams are going to be calling the Tennessee uh, Titans, the Los Angeles Chargers, maybe even the New York Jets. 
uh, for their potential next offensive tackle. I know the Jets do have a pretty good offensive line, though. But overall, this would be the only way we get Joe Alt is that we take him before number nine if there's a trade back. But the Bears are doing their homework. Chris Morgan, our offensive line coach, was working with Joe Alt and Blake Fisher, who I'm going to get into in a second. Um, he was working with both of them extensively, talking to them, getting to know them, laughing. Like overall, these guys were working together on a lot of drills during Notre Dame's pro day yesterday. So the Bears definitely have a high interest, sending especially your offensive line coach to go see him. That says a lot. I mean, even if they're just looking at him and scouting him, great. I don't care. Going to be a really impactful player for this team if the Bears were to bring him in. And I just want to address a few things that I said yesterday about Joe All is that I, it's not that Braxton Jones is bad. I think Braxton Jones is a above average left tackle. But if you can go out and get an elite left tackle to solidify your offensive line along with a center, which we did get this past uh, couple of days with Coleman Shelton, you can't you can't pass up on a guy like him. I mean, if you are not getting Caleb Williams, I really think that Joel Alt's the next guy, then Marvin Harrison Jr. Offensive line has been a problem for the Bears, and this guy would address a ton of those needs. So I really like Joe All. I think he'd be a great player for this team. You know, 6'8", 322. You, you cannot mess with that. Also, he has a 30-inch vertical for a guy that big. Shoot, put him on the Bulls. Why not? Uh, you know, a little double contract deal. Chicago legend, maybe. Uh, Bo Jackson kind of deal. Um, but yeah, I really like Joe All out of Notre Dame. So great pro day there as well. Um, going to the comment section right now. I said, wow, we got a lot of comments in there. If you're just tuning in, make sure you throw a bear down in there. Um, let's see what we got. <laughs> Phil, we got a bear down. Uh, we got Barry calling in from H town. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, we got Ron calling in saying bear down. Um, Milan, Illinois, AKA the <laughs> butt crack of the universe. Well, thanks for calling in. I really appreciate it guys. We got a bear down from Maine. Uh, yes, absolutely. FGB guys. If you haven't already put an FGB in the group chat as well, uh, but we got a bear down from St. Louis. Good day overall, guys. Really, really just a, a good week overall for the Chicago Bears. Um, my dad's watching right now, but he'll say I take after him. Uh, I'm a weird combination of my parents. You, my girlfriend even says I don't look like either of my parents, but from certain angles I do. But um, definitely uh, a lot of good things, guys. Okay, everyone's saying they like Brendan Rice. I pre appreciate your guys' comments there. Brendan Rice, I definitely would love for the Chicago Bears to pick up. Would be a really good signing for them. Uh, if you haven't already, please hit that like button, guys. Really appreciate it. The more likes we get, the more people see this video, more YouTube pushes it out to other Bears fans. So want to give the recap to everybody. But yes, really excited about that. Ooh, well, I'm going to get into Olu Fushano in a little bit, guys. I see a lot of people asking about that. Cherry, thanks for tuning in. Bear down. Bob, I see you. Absolutely, guys. <laughs> we got a lot of FGBs. Keep it up, guys. Keep it up in the group chat. Um, so let's go into, so we just went through Joe Alt. Let's go now into Blake Fisher, the other offensive lineman that we were looking at from Notre Dame. This would be used with that third pick. So then if we don't go offensive lineman with either the one or the nine, this would definitely be a pick at number 75 for the Chicago bears, Blake Fisher, right tackle, but an, a left tackle as well would be a perfect depth piece for this team. Six, six, 312 pounds. He's only 20 years old, about to be his birthday. So wish him happy birthday on Twitter. If you haven't already a 71.1 PFF grade. So a strong player overall, he's only given up five sacks over the last two seasons, three being uh, this past year. So you know, not, not a decline by any means. He's consistent. He's given up six quarterback hits in the last two seasons as well. And 17 quarterback hurry. So he's not a Joe alt, but he'd be a great depth piece. Chris Morgan seemed very interested in him as well. I think that's why the bears were there. Maybe guys, uh, they were looking at Blake Fisher overall because they're probably not going to end up getting Joe alt, but Blake Fisher would be great to sit behind Darnell, Wright. You know, Darnell Wright had that arm injury that he was one arm against Max Crosby this past year. Only gave up one sack, which is super impressive. But again, only one arm. If we were to have a guy like Blake Fisher behind him, we could have threw him in there and then, you know, let Darnell Wright heal up, get the right time. But overall, Blake Fisher is a good player, good footwork, strong player, athletic build that Ryan Poles looks for in an offensive lineman. So could be another option for the Chicago Bears if they decide to go in that direction and picking a guy up in the third. This is a super deep draft for offensive linemen, guys. So definitely could be a possibility. Um, but yes, I, I think what's up, guys? Uh, just opened up the group chat real quick. Um, but overall, I think that Blake Fisher, going back to Blake Fisher real quick, could be a good third round pick. I want to hear your guys' thought. Make sure you throw that in the live chat too. Uh, but 
not bad. I would like, I would not mind that pickup at all in the third round. I think he's a good player. There's a lot of upside to him. He has a lot of untapped potential. And I think Chris Morgan could definitely unlock that with a guy like Blake Fisher, but let's go into the guys that I'm super duper excited about guys. I mean, like really, really, uh, Foster, I see your comment. I'm going to get into that after the next guy. So please stay tuned. But Alabama edge rusher, Dallas Turner, who had his pro day on Tuesday. This dude is a Greek God and would him and Montez sweat would be unstoppable. I mean, I'm not kidding when I say that a really, really talented player. Um, and his stats don't lie. Six, four, 245 pounds runs a 4.46, 40 times. So crazy speed. He does play like an outside linebacker. I understand that, but his dominant position is edge and he definitely, Oh, what happened? We lost you guys. All right. Well, let's go to the other camera real quick. Sorry about that guys. So, uh, let's go back into Dallas Turner real quick. Dallas Turner for the Alabama, for Alabama played behind Will Anderson jr. This past year or two years ago, then he was his own show this past year, a really strong player. Again, 6'4", 245 pounds, very athletic, 15 tackles for losses past year, 10 quarterback sacks, one pass deflection, two forced fumbles. And I can see why he had a uh, pass deflection, considering the fact that he has a 40-inch vertical for a guy that big. Dude could easily dominate Zion Williamson on an NBA court. But really good player with 53 total tackles this past year for Alabama. Just a strong player to have across from Montez Sweat. And this is why I want the Bears to take a top edge this year because they extended Montez Sweat for four years. So we have Sweat for the next four years. But if we can get a rookie that can sit behind him and learn, and in four years, we still have we have Sweat and a rookie for the next four years together, would be unstoppable. I mean, this defensive line would actually, I don't know how offenses could actually have a shot against us. Really good player. He has a fast first step, great vision to the backfield, super strong player overall. He plays a lot bigger than he is. You know, 240, you know, 245 pounds is small for an edge, big for a linebacker, but he plays way bigger than that, guys. He bull rushes people. He bulldozes over. Uh, I am dropping a video. I did drop a video on him today. So after, if you want to go see more highlights of him, make sure you go check that out. Uh, really greatly appreciated, but a strong player overall from Alabama that I think would be great uh, alongside Montez Sweat. Um, and another guy that had his pro day today, and after seeing highlights, I'm sold on him. Edge Jared Verse from Florida State. I mean, this guy is so special. I mean, this guy is actually could be the next Khalil Mack, and I, I will I will put that on my gravestone, guys. Jared Verse is a fantastic player, you know, 6'4", 260 pounds, runs a 4'5", so not much slower than Dallas Turner and being 15 pounds heavier this past year for Florida State. Stats don't lie, guys. 13 tackles for loss, 9 sacks, 41 total tackles, 3 pass deflections, 1 forced fumble, 1 fumble recovery. This guy is special. Really, really special out of Florida State. I know my guy Will Wright loves this guy, and he sold me on him too. Because if Jared Verse were to come to Chicago Bears, same situation. You got Montez Sweat on a four-year extension right now. You have a rookie on a four-year deal. They they pair together and they you know dominate the NFL and especially the NFC North for the next four years. Your successor for Montez Sweat, if they don't re-sign him, is already on the team. And then you bring in another rookie in four years, so you don't have to worry about that with a top pick at edge. It's just a great cycle for the Bears to have and. You know, looking at him, great first step, great bull rush, great vision, high motor, great endurance, would absolutely be on the field at all times. I mean, you can't get this guy off the field. He's telling he's telling his coaches, I'm good, I'm good, and he goes out there and gets a sack. He was huge for Florida State this past year. Really good player. I think Jared Verse, honestly, if we were to trade back the number nine in this situation, I would trade back once. If you're feeling the heat a little bit, then take Verse at 10 but then trade back again. You can get more picks because Jared versus a projected top 15 pick at the moment, simply because Dallas Turner has a little bit better stat line. I mean, seriously, that's it. Jared verse is a super special player that the bears can go out and get. And they had coaches at the pro day looked really good. Just an overall great athlete. That would be great for this team. Uh, before I go back into everybody and a couple more things, I'm going to go to the live chat real quick. So thank you everyone for tuning in. Uh, again, it ha if you haven't already, please hit that like button. We're at about 45 likes right now. There's 150 people in the room. The more likes we get, the more Bears fans join. Also put an FGB or a bear down in the live chat and throw some co and questions in there. I'm happy to answer them. I'm going to be on for about another 15, 20 minutes for you guys. It's Friday. I hope everyone's having a great day too, as it's 
freaking Friday, man. I hope you guys have good plans. Stay safe out there if you're in Chicago. Snow is a little crazy, but overall, you know, let's let's have a good weekend. It's a good it's a good time to be a Bears fans, guys. Things are looking in the very positive direction. So let's go into uh, Foster. I saw your comment earlier, and I'm going to go back to that right now. First, I got to find it. Um, so could we trade back nine and still get, uh, oh, see Foster, this is why we're friends. Cause we think the same way. I think you could trade back from number nine and still get verse or Brian Thomas. I'm a huge Brian Thomas fan, by the way, guys, six, four, 215 pounds. Yeah. He runs a four five 40, but who cares? This guy has hands like glue, uh, LSU's pro day. I haven't seen anything on that yet. So I'll be covering that when it happens. But Brian Thomas jr. Is a super special player that I think would be great for the Chicago bears, but Jared burst, you could trade back that number nine and get maybe a few extra picks and still get him at 10 or 11, but an impactful player. I will say this though, that the Vikings are very high on Jared verse too. They're at 11. So I wouldn't get past Minnesota if they don't end up taking a quarterback at number 11 or trading up but something to be be considerate of. There's a lot of guys that we can trade back and still get that would be top-notch talent like Chop Robinson or along those lines. But I think Jared Verse would have the biggest impact on this team out of the way. Uh, what's up, Broski Bear? Nice to see you, man. Thanks for always tuning in. I really appreciate it. Everyone that's tuning in, you guys are awesome. Thanks for tuning in on a Friday. I hope you guys have a great weekend ahead. Uh, Bob, you, you agree? Yes, Turner at nine. I know, I know you agree with this, Bob. I love your energy about it. Again, Dallas Turner could go a little bit sooner, though. A lot of people are saying if Atlanta keeps that number eight pick, he's going to go at eight. But, you know, Dallas Turner is a special player. And no matter verse or Turner, we're going to do great. Dude, nice to see you, man. How's it go? It's going great. Happy Friday, guys. Uh, <laughs> Barry, I like Turner's last name. I can see why. Uh, I know that you'd be getting that jersey right away. We might be doing a jersey giveaway if we end up getting him. But overall, oh, Broski Bear, Chop Robinson over Turner. I like Chop Robinson. He's a little smaller at 6'3", 245, so same weight as Dallas Turner. But he, he has a great motor, too. I mean, these we are in such a deep edge. Offensive lineman, wide receiver, and quarterback draft guys. And ironically, the Bears need all of them. So what a year. Ryan Poles just playing chess. He, he, he can see the future. We got a bear down from Portugal. If you guys are just tuning in, say where you're calling in from. You know, Bears fans all over the world. Thank you for tuning in. Really appreciate it. White ghost, we need to trade back from nine. I think that's going to happen if we don't trade back from one. And one is still a very big possibility, guys, that we trade back from that if we don't go with Caleb Williams. Again, a super deep quarterback draft. We can get a generational haul for that. Ryan Poles is definitely considering that still, but all directions are pointing that we are taking Caleb Williams. But there's that chance. So we need to trade back one or nine. There's no doubt about that, guys. Um, we got some more bears downs in the comment section. Um, who do you think is the biggest sleeper in the draft right now? Um, honestly, Roma Dunze, I, I think Roma Dunze would be the number one wide receiver in any draft prior to this one. Um, really, really, really talented player, six, three, 195 pounds. Dude catches everything, multiple thousand yard seasons at Washington, just overall a really special player. And I think that Roma Dunze is a sleeper, even though he's a top 10 pick. Um, also from a sleeper perspective, there's, you know, Tyler Newbin from Minnesota at safety. I think he's a super athletic, big safety that kind of reminds me of Eddie Jackson at Alabama. So could be overall just a, a really, really good player, uh, to bring in as well. But there's a lot of sleepers in this draft. There's Robinson from Mizzou. Who's another edge that the bears could go out and get, uh, Cedric Van Praan is another sleeper. I think he might end up going in the second round, depending on how his pro day goes. So overall, just big, big sleepers in this upcoming draft. Um, but if you guys don't mind, they, wow, we got a lot more people tuning in right now, over 125. Thank you guys for tuning in. Really appreciate it. Throw your comments in the comment section below. If you're just tuning in, throw a bear down in the live chat. Uh, but love, love to hear you guys. <laughs> Scuba, snow in Chi Town. Wow, I'm in Decatur, 61 and sunny. Yeah, it's it's weird, man. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm right outside of O'Hare Airport right now, and it's snowing pretty darn hard. Uh, Camara from Colorado is another sleeper. Could not agree more with this. He's projected in the second and third round right now. So maybe the Bears go with an edge in the third round. There's a, there's so many possibilities in this draft that the Bears could do that I'm overall really really excited about. Uh, but out of all the guys that I've talked about today, guys, um, yes, Foster, also the center out of Wisconsin, super big sleeper. I think that the Bears might end up going with him if he falls pretty far, but we'll see what ends up happening. So let's go back to the top of a conversation, guys. Keep those uh, keep those comments coming in the live chat. Bear down, FGB, you, uh, questions, you name it overall. And I want to hear your thoughts on these, uh, these players. Oh, we got Oklahoma in the house. Thanks for calling in, Frank. I really appreciate it. 
Let's go into the overall players again. So Caleb Williams, obviously huge target this past week. Bears showed out for his pro day, and he did a great job. I mean, his throws were on target every single time, rolling out of the pocket, looked really, really good, was hitting his favorite wide receiver, Brendan Rice, who I'll talk about in a minute. The Bears did a great job today. I mean, a great job this week scouting the top guys who need to fill in for this team. Um, I really like. I like what Caleb Williams has shown. I mean, you look at his stats, he's a great player. I mean, Heisman Trophy winner, 10,000 yards in three years, barely any inter interceptions. I know the fumbles are a big concern, um, but overall, he is a fantastic player. There's no denial of that. His pro day was huge. Poles had big smiles on his face. The Bears actually met with him before his pro day, the only team to do that. So clearly, there's a mutual interest between the two. And Caleb Williams is also doing due diligence for himself meeting with a team that's very likely to draft him at number one. Um, but the big guy that I'm excited about this week was Brendan Rice out of USC. Um, also saw him at Caleb Williams Pro Day, but this guy was fantastic. Tracking down deep balls, great vision, good footwork, great speed overall. Just a talented overall player, son of Jerry Rice. So imagine if we had Jerry Rice and Simone Biles in the stands for every home game for the Chicago Bears this past year. It would, it would be nuts. It would actually be nuts. But this kid comes from a line of one of the arguably the greatest receiver in NFL history, and he could be that. I mean, 6'3", 215 pounds. Just a strong player to have on your roster. Uh, really excited about what he brought at USC's Pro Day. But if the Bears trade back from number one, guys, I would love to see the Bears take Joe Alt. I really do. I, you get that elite offensive tackle that could be an all-pro for years to come for the team. Really talented overall. Six eight, three hundred and twenty two pounds. Plays looks like a tight end. Plays like an offensive lineman. Reliable. One sack he's only given up at Notre Dame his entire NCAA career. Just talented and never penalized. A captain, a leader. That's what he wants to be. He said in his interview. So would love to see the Bears potentially go out and get Joe All if they decide to trade back to number one. Maybe take a quarterback at nine like Michael Penix or Bo Nix. We'll see what the Bears end up doing. A lot of people are pounding the table saying Tyson Bajan could be quarterback one next year, which anything's possible. He looks really good. He's having a good off season so far. Definitely put on some muscle. Haven't seen any throwing videos yet, but Hey, we might actually have Bajan on in a couple of weeks uh, working on that right now as best as I can. No promises, but could happen. Would love to hear from him himself. Uh, and then Blake Fisher, a depth piece at right tackle and left tackle from Notre Dame as well. Not nearly as good as all definitely giving up some more sacks and quarterback pressures, but a good player to have behind Darnell Wright if he ever gets hurt because he's a true right tackle. And then Braxton Jones, too. He can also play left tackle. So there's a good possibility, and Chris Morgan worked with both of those guys at Notre Dame's Pro Day. So overall, good players. And then Dallas turned out of Alabama. Bears head coaches there. Bears head scouts there. Did fantastic at his Pro Day. Fast off the line. Did everything he does in a game with pads on. Just overall, good ball player. And I would love to see him pair with Montez Sweat. Just this guy is an absolute sack machine. Ten sacks this past year for Alabama. This guy just gets to the backfield, stops runners, drops back in the coverage, pass, pass deflections, you name it, he does it. He's rumored to go at eight at Atlanta, but if Atlanta loses that number one pick for tampering with Kirk Cousins, anything's possible, guys. Anything is possible. And then Jared Verse had his pro bay today at Florida State University. Looked great as well. Another good player. Would fit much better in Matt Eberflus's defense, in my personal opinion. But overall, just a good player to have on your roster as a bull, just goes out there and gets the job done. And that's what you need for the Chicago Bears. And also, you want to see these guys get drafted live. We're having our NFL draft party on April 25th at 6 p.m. Central Time at Rizzo's Bar and Inn, literally right outside of Wrigley Field. There's a ball game right before, so you guys can go to the Cubs game and come to us right after. Link in the description in order to get your tickets. We're going to have Bears players there, former and current Drink deals, food deals, you name it, come and have it. If you can't make it, no worries. We're going to have a live stream here for the entire first two picks for the Bears, which we're super excited about. All ticket proceeds go are a donation to a Chicago nonprofit called College Bound Opportunities for first-generation college students. I was a part of it. Any donation is great. If you guys can go to the link in the description, check it out. and I would love for you guys to make it. I'll be there with other podcasters as well. Super excited for that one. More information to come. And please, obviously, if you're new, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Let's go to the live chat real quick. I got a couple minutes for you guys here right now. Let's see what we got. So, um, Jerome, Caleb is your guy. It seems to be a lot of Bears. I think a lot of Bears fans are finally buying into Caleb Williams. I know a lot of people are upset about Justin Fields, but the future is here. Caleb Williams could be the guy, and I could not agree more with that. Turtle Wax commercial, um, not today in <laughs> Chicago. Foster, you're, you're on fire, man. Happy Friday, everybody, if you're just tuning in right now. Uh, love your love your take on Verse. 
Uh, that guy has got that killer in him. Could not agree more. This guy goes against anybody and dominates every single time. Uh, Brandy, great question. How about Latu? His injury history really scares me. You know, breaking your neck and then tearing your ACL is not a good combination to have. And Ryan Poles definitely is going to put that into factor. But he is a fantastic player at the same time. Really just dominates the game. But I feel like he might get taken at five or six. So I don't see him really getting to the Bears in any way unless we trade back. And with such a deep edge draft, I don't see the Bears going after him. But if they do, I would be more than happy about this pick. Would be really great. Um Thanks, Broski, for correcting me there. Six, Chop Robinson is 6'3", 255 pounds. Yep, yep, you are very correct there. Um, Caleb is our next homegrown guy who will be in Canton. Title, very high possibility. He has everything that you want in a future Hall of Famer. So super, could not agree more with this comment. He could be a Hall of Famer, but he hasn't stepped on an NFL field yet. So excited to see what he ends up doing, but we'll find out. Um, we got we got Ernie called in, ready for next season. Guys, throw an FGB in the live chat if you haven't already. But overall, yeah, I'm ready for next season. Just get me to the draft. I just want to know who is ready to go. Um, let's see. If Ult and Aduze are both at nine, which one do you pick? Who? That's tough. I, I, I You got to go with Joel. You have to go with Joe Alt. You can get Brendan Rice in the third round. You already have Keenan Allen and DJ Moore. But if Joe Alt somehow falls, even Olu Fushanu fall to nine, you have to take a generational left tackle. I mean, if the Bears are really sold on Braxton Jones, good on them. But having a guy of that caliber to protect your quarterback, whoever that may be, especially if it's Caleb Williams, would be great. And Olu Fushanu, by the way, if he falls to nine, played high school ball with Caleb Williams. So those guys have a relationship. They know each other. They've stayed in touch. They've interacted on social media. Absolutely think that would be huge for the Chicago Bears. Um, I want Caleb in nine for Punky QB2. Is that, I assume that's from what you mean from a numbers perspective. Uh, but yeah, that'd be pretty sweet if you did wear a number nine to match Jim McMahon. Uh, genuine. Uh, offensive line is definitely a bigger need than the defensive line. This guy entering the draft with Ryan Pace oriented four pick draft. Number nine isn't going to have nearly to trade halls the number one. Could not agree more. Yep. The number one you're going to get way more for. The number nine you'd have to trade back multiple times to get multiple picks and all that good stuff. So overall... I'm with you. I think that the Bears definitely need to address offensive line. The center position they kind of did with Shelton, uh, Cameron Shelton. I did a video on him if you guys want to go check that out. But yeah, the Bears definitely, I mean, they have Tevin Jenkins and Nate Davis as your guards. You have Darren O'Reilly as your right tackle. Braxton Jones is your left tackle. But I, really, like, do we want an elite left tackle or are we fine with Braxton Jones? And then nothing against Braxton Jones. He's done a good job, but he gets penalized a ton. And that's my big problem with him for a lot of people that have been asking, really, he just gets penalized all the time. And that's just my big issue right now. Um, let's see. We got, I want Seattle 16 for two thirds and a nine. I think that'd be good for the bears, but you are going to miss out on Jared verse. You are going to miss out probably on chop Robinson. You are going to miss out on Roman dudes. But you could get Brian Thomas. I really don't know what polls is going to end up doing. I really don't. No one knows. But all this stuff that we say is just predictions. We're having fun. Overall, guys, just big, big opportunities. There's so much that we can go, that so much that can happen right now for the Bears and everybody. And there's so many good players in this draft that we can do. Oh, my God, Don Burr is here. If that's your O-line, Detroit is going to dominate you definitely. Thanks, Don. I appreciate it. But, hey, I think we held the Lions pretty good this past year. The fact that Don Burr is in here, guys, you guys are in for a treat. Don, keep on commenting. I'll throw it up. If you guys don't know John, you know him now. Uh, Joseph, any word on Josh Blackwell? All I heard is good things are happening, so stay tuned for that, guys. That's all I'm going to say. Um, let's go into a few other comments here. And also, before we continue this show, ask your comments before we log off, guys. This show is sponsored by Freshy Organic Tequila Seltzer. If you like tequila and you like seltzers, bam, go to the QR code and find Freshy near you. 99 calories, 4.5 alcohol uh, content level. Really good. I love them. They're fantastic. And summer's around the corner. Couldn't, couldn't love Freshy anymore. Make sure you go try it today. They also are coming out with their own tequila, which is also very good. Had a chance to try it. Oh, man. At Foster, do you drink Foster? <laughs> oh, man, we got a war in the live chat, guys. You guys are in for a treat. The fact that 
Don Burr is in here. Oh my goodness. Braxton ain't going to make it as a guard in my opinion. Um, you know, that's a good point. I mean, trading Nate Davis, maybe getting like a fifth or six. I mean, just getting his cap off the books would allow the bears maybe go out and get some people in the cap. But if you trade Nate Davis, you are indicating that you're moving Braxton Jones. Or you're not taking a guard in the first round, guys. There's no Jackson Powers Johnson, but like then what do you do with Cam Shelton? So overall, um, I don't see the Bears taking a guard in this upcoming draft, but it is what it is. We are on the rise, Don. Don, watch out. The Bears are on the rise this year, guys. I, I, let me go on a little, little bit of a rant right here. The Bears doubled their over doubled their wins from 2022 to 2023. That's a big win. This roster got better. They got more experience. They learned how to win. They were four and two in their last six games. They almost beat the Packers. They should have beat the Lions and they should have beat the Browns. If those games would have happened, the Bears would have been a playoff team this last year with last year's roster. You're going to tell me then you're going to go out and get a new quarterback. You're going to go out and get another target. Your wide receiver room is better. You have a better tight end too. You have a better running back room. You have a better safety in uh, Kevin Byard. You have more depth on this defense overall. This team is going to be really good next year, guys. And I'm telling you, other fan bases are recognizing that. And they recognize that this defense is a Super Bowl defense right now. You go out and get another edge rusher. You are the elite defense of the NFL. You already have a really good offense. Your offensive line was improving. You didn't have Nate Davis due to, you know, his mother passing this past year, which, you know, I'm, I can't imagine what he was going through. But when he came in, he was a good player. And that's what the Bears need. And this Bears team, in my opinion, I'm stamping it, is an 11-win team right now. They're going to win games. They're going to make it. You know, Detroit, Don, no doubt about it, Detroit's a good ball club. And they could win the NFC North again. But I think the Bears are going to be a wild-card team. The, when your division, when you're last place with seven wins, you're in a tough division. And the fact that we beat the Lions, we beat the Vikings in the second half, we almost beat the Packers, we held them under 20 points, for them to then go to Dallas and dominate truly shows what the Bears can do. I am super excited about what this team is. <laughs> you know, I, I really think that this team is going to be special. They have the momentum behind them. They have a new coaching staff. They kept Flus, who really the locker room loves. And this team is going to be really good. They're doing all the right scouting right now, all these pro days that they went to, all these overall free agents that they brought in. This team is a lot better, guys. And if you agree with that, please hit that like button. I want to know that Bears Nation is also agreeing with me that this team is a lot better. This team is a lot better. There's no doubt about it. Yes, you got rid of Justin Fields, but th they could be better without him. As, you know, I, I know there's a lot of Justin Fields fans in uh, that follow this page. This team is going to be a lot better. I want to hear what also other people are saying and what they're thinking from a wins perspective. I'm going 11 right now, and that's before the draft. That could change after the draft, guys. Really, really excited about this team for next season. Uh, Kevin Mario. Wow. I hope that's a good wow. Like I'm pumped up. Um, but overall way I thought Detroit versus everybody. Now you're a green Bay fan. Don isn't everything but a bears fan. Just putting that out there, guys. Um, we got a question from David. Do you think it's fair to expect, uh, a CJ shows treatment from Caleb? Yeah. The, the expectation is for sure. There you are. You are the generational guy. You're supposed to be the, the guy that takes the bears to the next level, build a statue. He should have, if he has a season like CJ show, this, this team is for sure winning 11 games. Like I'm sure my dad's going to call me and be like, put a hundred bucks on the bears, win 11 games after this. Um, I'm really excited about it. You know, Joe R a blind man can see this team is going to do great things. Uh, even at this point, couldn't agree more. Uh, let's see guys. Kevin Marshall. <laughs> it seems like Kevin's pumped about it too. Uh, let's hear what you guys have to say. Do you think that we get a couple of undrafted punters in camp? I, I think the Bears will get a new punter, guys. You know, Trenton Gill, just he was the worst punter in the league last year. Stat-wise. Stat-wise. Um, I think he's a good locker room guy, but you gotta put you gotta put it on the field. So overall, I think I, to, Ricky, to answer your question, I think we do get a new uh punter. I think we're gonna bring in a couple of a couple and we'll see. Bears have also kept randomly bringing in a couple guys from like Rutgers and whatever. So the Bears are eyeing potential replacement for their next punter. Uh Z Bears, uh exciting times for this squad. Comes together, a lot of fun. Chicago up, bear down. That's right. Could not agree more with that, guys. The energy is there, and we have to keep that going into the season. We have to keep this going in the offseason. The draft is going to be so much fun, guys. I'm telling you, this is going to be a lot of fun. Let's see what we got here. I say we trade with Washington, trade that for the Giants pick, either Turner or Verse, trade the ninth to Vegas, get Brian Thomas. 
That's a hell of a take. And I really like that one. You're getting more with almost the same talent level as a t- an elite guy. And it's less risk, higher reward. I'm a big Bo Nix guy. I've said that for a while. I like what he did this past year. I think he's a good quarterback. I mean, 5,000 passing yards, 49 touchdowns, and three interceptions. That's greatness right there. That's dominant. In the Pac-12 where Caleb William was, dude, you dominated him. You had better stats than him. So I could see that absolutely happening. Let's see. Bajan on Jay. Guys, help me out. Comment. Tag him on Twitter. Tag him on Twitter and be like, you got to come on. I'm, I have an internal connection to Bajan. I'm trying my best. It seems like there's interest. I really want to get him on. I would love for him to just be unfiltered and talk to you guys. So we got a lot of live streams coming up too with some pretty special guests. So overall, really excited about it. All right. Let's see. Let's see. Guys, stop arguing with Don Burr and say how many wins you want for the Bears this year. How about that? How about that, guys? Let's let's switch it up a little bit. Um, but overall, really excited about this upcoming season, guys. I think the Bears made a lot of good moves. But again, would like to see Joe all on the Bears if we do end up trading back. Uh, Brian Thomas Jr. would be fantastic, too. Th- this team is so much better than it was last year. It really was. It really is, and it, it will be next year. And I hope that you guys are ready because – uh, the Bears are going to take over the NFL. They really are. They really are going to take over the NFL. <laughs> Guys, Don Burr is replying. He's saying two wins. Okay, okay. Don got his. All right. At least nine wins. Okay, David, I can mess with nine wins. I can mess with nine wins because we're going to get more. I like I like, like what you're thinking. You're going you're gonna to end up getting more wins. Um, thanks, Nick. Great time to be a Bears fan. Shep Poles is putting it together. Absolutely. Uh, right now we currently have about 29 million in cap, put 14 million aside for your rookies. And then that's also with a couple other contracts that we haven't officially put out there yet. So I did the math and it's about six and a half million. So you still could get to either debt pieces, maybe a Tyler Boyd. I would not mind that one at all. Um, but yeah, uh, the bears do have about 6 million in cap left. All right, there we go. Now we got some wins. Frank's feeling 12 wins. I like it, Frank, because we're going to sweep the North this year. Take that, Don. Uh, 16 and one. All right, who's your one loss going to be? That's a good question. Let's let's see who the loss is going to be. Foster is saying 11 for the Bears. Bear down from Chicago and FTB, Bud the Lion, and Minnesota Vikings. Foster, you're the man, as always. Who is the one loss? Though? I'm really curious about this one loss. Fun fact, Barry, I don't drink coffee. As crazy as that sounds, I don't drink coffee. I have green tea. I have two glasses of green tea a day. That's it. And it's uncaffeinated too. So I do not drink coffee. I just run. Uh, I, I don't know how I do it. My girlfriend definitely definitely doesn't know how I do it either, but no coffee for me over here. All right, Z Bear is 9 to 11 wins. I like that one. 14 and 3, Bears win the division. Ron, I like that one a lot as well. 11 with if the quarterback is picked. Okay, Carrie, let's go back to you real quick. If we, do, if let's say it's Tyson Bajan, how many wins do you get with Bajan? He was 500 with the Bears, by the way, guys. 12 wins for the Bears title. I like that. Don't know the schedule yet, but the 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 teams are out there. Let's pull that up uh, for you guys. 2024 opponents. So the Bears opponents in 2024 for you guys. This might change the way some of you guys are thinking about this. The Bears will play at home the Lions, the Packers, the Vikings, the Rams, the Seahawks, the Jaguars, the Titans, the Panthers, and the Patriots. We have a really easy home schedule. Holy crap. I'm going to do a video breakdown on that. But the Lions, okay. Like, sorry, Don. We, we pretty much beat you guys twice. You can thank the refs for your one win. Packers, not worried about. Vikings, really not worried about. Rams, yeah, they were in the playoffs last year, but they lost a ton of their coaches. The Seahawks are on a downhill slope right now. They're rebuilding. The Jaguars, I don't think they're legit. I don't. The Titans, rebuild. Panthers, rebuild. Patriots, rebuild. Shoot, we can win one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All nine games at home, which, by the way, if you guys are going to the UK game, I think I'm going to try to go to that, so stay tuned for that. Um, but that's that's nine wins in my book right there. And then you have the Lions, Packers, and Vikings on the road, not worried about it. Cardinals. Total toss up this year away in Arizona. That'd be a good game to go to. The Niners is a loss. Okay. The Texans could be a loss. The Colts, I'm not worried about. And the Commanders, I'm really not worried about. So I think I'm going to up my 11 wins after seeing that. Ooh. Okay. Okay. Uh, falling back to this season, eight and nine. Okay. Bears goal, 10 wins. Okay. Have you heard anything about the schedule yet? So I just did all the guys. So let's see what we. 
This right here. This this is this is me right here. 17 and 0, baby. I would love it. Nick, if you drink coffee, you do five shows a day plus your job. Fun fun fact about me, guys, I do work a nine to five. Uh, I do work, uh, I'm a media consultant, so I'm pretty busy, but I do love making shows for you guys. So I really appreciate all your support. Joseph R is saying 12 and five. Uh, Don Burr, two and 15. Don't talk about your record here, Don. We're not talking about the Lions record. We're talking about the Bears record, okay? Chris Cook, very easy schedule. Couldn't agree more. So was that nine home games this year? Nine home games, one of them is considered international, which the Bears, I, that's getting robbed, in my opinion, because the Bears didn't have nine home games last year. Okay, Corey, thanks for the comment. Tyson, six wins. Caleb, 10 wins. Okay, very good. Beat the Packers. Bears, con <laughs> I love Don Burr. I love Don Burr that he's here. I love throwing him up on the screen because everyone knows who Don Burr is. <laughs> um, Drone, 13 wins, four losses. Bajan, 12 and five from Barry. Wow. From Houston. <laughs> Donver, you guys did that for 50 years. Okay, Joe, 12 and 5, but this year we lose the NFC Championship only this year. This team is young and developing. I think that'd be great if they made it to the NFC Championship, guys. Nick, I may go to a London game too. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about once I have it finalized. I got to look at my credit card points. I got to look at everything over there, but I would love to go to London, guys. Would be awesome. Sweep of Green Bay. Hell yeah. And if you guys are excited about that, put one more FGB in the live chat, guys. But Whew, what a day. What a day, guys. What a week. Busy week for the Bears, busy week for me. And I'm so happy that you guys came into this episode of Just Another Year Chicago. Z Bears, anytime, man. I love what I'm doing. Hopefully, I'm full time within the next year on this. I'm really hoping for it. It's it's an exciting time. It's an exciting time to be a Bears fan. It's an exciting time for Just Another Year Chicago Bears. One day, the random media wave for Tyson Bajit will be studied. <laughs> I got you, David. We're all a little crazy over here. Just want to beat the Packers 0-10 in the last five years. Don't want to talk about it. Good one on the Lions, Nick. Yep. Uh, there's those FGBs, guys. Keep them up. Keep throwing them up on the screen. FGB, FGB. It's going to be a lot of fun this year. We're going to beat the Packers both times. I'm not worried about them. I'm not. They overpaid. Also, I don't know if you guys saw Josh Jacobs literally like flipped over on a motorcycle today. Like, What a great idea. And he was wearing his helmet like on his head but wasn't wearing the helmet. Just a complete oxymoron. So that just shows that why he went to the Green Bay Packers. But overall, guys, primetime kill. Let's see. I'm on hard knocks. We'll see what happens. We'll see if the Bears are on hard knocks finally. I I would I would like it as a, a fan, but I know the players have said they wouldn't want it because it's a distraction. But overall, guys, what a live stream. What a Friday. Happy Friday. Crack a beer. Pour the scotch. Pour a glass of wine. I know my dad's already pouring his wine. If, if you like get whatever you got. Just make yourself a nice drink. It's a great weekend to be a Bears fan because everyone's scared of us and we're moving in the right direction. But with that, before you leave, if you please could hit that like button if you enjoyed the video. Like this video also if you're just a Bears fan. It helps the channel out and subscribe if you haven't already. But with that, guys, thank you for tuning in this episode of Just Another Year Chicago Bears. My name is Dick Rohde. Happy Friday. Stay tuned for tomorrow's episode on another prospect to take care of. And I'm excited about it. Thank you for tuning in, and as always, bear down, baby.